All right, so we're in the uh, section on partial uh, fractions. And basically what we're doing is we're taking a fraction, a ratio of polynomials or rational expression uh, where P is some polynomial and Q is some polynomial. And we're trying to break it up into smaller problems, all right? And granted, I realize this might look nightmarish to you. I wanna claim we do not write problems in nightmarish, but we're gonna go through each one of these things separately. And for example, and we'll do certainly other examples as well besides this one over here, but this is a, you know, for example, if you're given this ratio over here, the top is degree three, the bottom is degree two. What they say to do is if you have the degree of the numerators greater than or equal to the degree of the denominators, you'd have to long divide. And we'll go through that. I'll do it at the whiteboard, all right? The next thing up, which is really where, you know, maybe the method that I described to you in class might be different than another teacher would do or a book would show you. But the bottom line is, if they're simple, what I'm gonna show you, I believe is a really simple technique. And most people catch on it. They can, you know, listen and, and try a few examples. But what they want you to do is take this thing over here and kind of factor the bottom and then write down that it's probably gonna split up into those you know, bottoms with linear factors in it. Now, again, the linear factors may be raised to a power. I have to write those things down, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much, all right? And we'll go to that example, by the way. We'll do that. The next wing is a little more difficult. It has to do with irreducible quadratics. What does that mean? A, fa a quadratic that can't be factored using real numbers. We're gonna see that, on occasion you'll see that. We have a method for that as well. And it looks like this over here. I know this looks terrible to you. There's no doubt about it. You're looking at it, I have no idea what to do. I don't know what you want me to do. We'll go to examples. So again, I can't say this over and over again. It looks nightmarish to people. I can, I'll be honest with you, it's not. We write properly work beautifully. And we'll go to the examples for you. In the examples, we put a lot of work down there for you. And I'm not opposed to showing you a different way of doing it, but here's the deal. It would be really nice if you could follow what we're presenting to you and then you try on your own, all right? And this is where you try it on your own, all right? So let me go back over here. And what I'm gonna do is just go back to the, to the lecture portion. I'm not gonna do examples yet. I just wanna see if I can read through this at the whiteboard, all right? So let me do another share. And give me a moment. Okay, and what I'm going to claim over here is that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm seeing the instructions, right? These are the instructions and they're kind of simplistic instructions, but I want to just go through it one step at a time, all right? And the first thing, it, I, I definitely, you know, looking at it, I want to point out, I definitely see a ratio of polynomial. Let me point that out to you. There's a polynomial here. So polynomial here. What do I notice about the polynomial top? It's degree three. The one at the bottom is degree two. All right, I know that. What do they want me to do though? If the degree of the top is greater than or equal to the degree of the bottom, I have to long divide. I have to, no choice. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab this guy Pull it on the side. And I just want to do what they asked me to do. Now, someone says, oh, they gave you the answer. Why don't you just trust them? No, I want to see if I can do it. And I'll write this down for you. And it, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy for you, but let's write it down. It's going to be 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 is being divided into, let's write this down. 6x cubed plus 5x squared. Some students need to put a missing place in. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. Your math one, our teacher told you to do that anyway. And what am I going to do now? I'm going to try to match. What times this would give you this? Well, that would be 2x. I'll write that down for you. What do you get? Distributive property. You would get 6x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x. And what do you got to do? You have to subtract. And again, if you're having trouble with long division, you really are having trouble with prior courses like math 092 and math 100. 
And it might even go back to like simple grade school. Like you don't want to do long division with numbers. I will say polynomial long divisions tend to be easier than numbers though, right? especially the ones we write because they really are finger number problems. So what do you get over here? I'm going to subtract it and you're going to get this. You're going to get nine X squared plus two X minus seven. Right? I'm going to keep repeating. Now, you know, again, when I, excuse me, I'm going to repeat till I get to the edge. What times this would match this identically? I'm going to say plus three. And what do you get there? You would get nine X squared minus six X minus three. What are you going to do now? Subtract. What do you get? Eight X minus four. So if you remember back to Math 100, when you did this in Math 100, the teacher told you to write down what you got. Well, what'd you get? You got 2x plus 3 plus, right, I'll write this over here, plus unfinished business. Well, the unfinished business is 8x minus 4. You didn't continue to divide it by what? 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. All right, that's where this is coming from over here. Step one is done. Let's go to step two. And we'll do it one step at a time. Step two says that you're going to take this. And I'm going to pull it on the side again for you. You're going to take this thing. And what you're going to do to this thing over here and I'll read it to you. It says, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, let me point this out to you. Well, this is degree one, and that's degree two. That's clearly less than it. It says, then factor the denominator into linear factors or irreducible quadratics. Again, an irreducible is going to be a quadratic that can't be factored using real number. All right? Right? An irreducible quadratic fast quadratic can be factored into linear factors with real coefficients. I said that. Let's keep going. I want to see if I can do it. All right. So it says this is too tough for me. You're going to go on. So what I want to do is I want to write this down now. Now someone's going to say, I can't remember what I just read. Whoops, sorry about that. Let me get my eraser out too. They said, factor the denominator. Well, wouldn't this be awful if this wasn't factorable? If it's going to work with finger numbers, they have to be the finger numbers going to work. Well, I'm going to write this down. I'm going to see if it works. It would be awful if it didn't work. I really mean that. What's 3x times x? 3x squared. Then you get minus 3x plus x is minus 2x. That worked nice. And you do get minus 1. So I think I did okay on that. Let's go back. I want to put it over here. And I did that. And I got what they said. 3x plus 1, x minus 1. I feel good about that. Here comes the part a lot of students, when they read this, have no idea what's been stated. But I'll tell you what's been stated. They said assign each linear factor the sum of n partial fractions. Let me go through that with you. And I'll write this down. Well, whoops, sorry about that. I did it again, sorry. Equals, well, this is just 2x plus 3. That's not a fraction. But then they said, you're going to be writing down these linear factors. And there's one of the 3x plus 1. And there's one of the x minus one. But then they go on to say that you don't know what the tops are, nor do I. Now, I know in my notes I use these subscripted variables like k1 and k2, but I'm going to use an a and a b instead. And I got to be honest with you, for the most part, you're probably never going to exceed more than three letters anyway. Here's the part where, where you know, maybe my method and another teacher's method might differ. But what I'm going to claim over here is my goal is to find the A 
and the B that makes this true. Now, someone says, oh, I'll just play around all day long and look for numbers. No, you're going to write this down. And I'll go through the method with you. And yeah, I know it's work. Okay. I want to tell you I'm going to do this over here. My goal is to find an A and a B that makes this true. The way I'm going to accomplish that is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. What's the LCD? 3x plus 1 times x minus 1. Should be easy to do. What do you get? Well, on the left side, really simple. You get 8x minus 4. What do you get on the right side? Again, I want to point out what I'm doing. I'm taking this and multiplying it by the first term. Well, I'm going to put parentheses on this now. If I did that, what would I get? Well, I certainly get A. 3x plus 1 would disappear, and I get x minus 1. Plus, well, I'll put parentheses on this guy. Again, what I want to point out what I'm doing. I'm taking this, and I'm multiplying this term. I certainly get B. But what disappears? The factor x minus 1, what are you left off with? 3x plus 1. All right, let me go through it in stages with you. Now, this is where, I, I really mean it, this is where some teachers actually expand this thing, equate coefficients, write down linear equations, and it's a lot of work. I'm not saying it can't be done. What I'm saying is I'm looking for something easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set x equal to 1. So someone says, why would you have chose that number? And I'm going to say because it's easy. And why is it easy? If x is 1, this becomes none. And zero times A is none. Now granted, this might be work and this might be work, but this disappeared. And I'll write that down for you. So if X is one, you would get eight minus four, which is four. That's the left side. If X is one, one minus one is none and none times A is none. Next one's gonna be B. And if X is one, I'd get four. Well, I gotta be honest with you. That's really easy. B is equal to what number? One. Now I want to find out what A is. Now this is where, again, you may disagree with me. You say, I don't want to do that. I'm going to pick X to be zero. If it's not easy, I shouldn't be doing it. If it's easy, I want to do it. What do you get on the left side? Minus four. What again, the right side of X is zero. You would get minus A, right? Plus B, what's B? B is one, isn't it? And if X is zero, I'd get, well, three plus one is one, right? Well, I think I can do that. You get minus four, minus A, plus one. You might say it's too much work. Let's see what happens. You get minus five equals minus A. And what does this tell me? A is five. So I found out what B is, and I found out what A is. I guess I, I wonder if I'm right. We could check it. But what I want to do is, I'm going to erase this now. This is A. And what's A? A is 5. And let me erase this guy. And this is B. And what's B? B is 1. Okay. Let me go back. And I'm going to put this down now. I'm going to erase these up here, put a box on it. Then we'll look at the answer key. That's five. And that is one. Let's look at the key. Gee, they didn't do it. So I guess what I have to do is I have to do the work. And someone says, I wonder what the work is. Well, I'm not suggesting you want to do it, but I'm going to add this together now. All right, it's going to be tough. 2x plus 3 plus, this is why having a key is so nice. Well, it's going to be 5 times x minus 1, which is 5x minus 
five plus three x times one, which is three x plus one. Wow, this is a lot of work. Let's put this down, two x plus three plus, I'm gonna multiply the bottom out, that's three x squared. Now, yeah, I really mean this, you should be thankful you get answer keys, but not here you don't, you have to do the work. That's three x squared minus three x plus x is plus, uh, minus two x, I mean, and you get minus one. What do you got on top, eight x minus four. I'm still not done. I gotta add these guys together. It's nightmarish, isn't it? And this is why you should be thankful that you have a K. You could look at your K and see if you got it right. Well, I got work to do. Three X squared minus two X minus one. We'll look at the, the original problem later. It seems like a lot of work though, doesn't it? Checking, and this is why I really do enjoy having a K. Well, let me write this down for you. This would be six X cubed minus four X squared minus two X plus nine X squared minus six X minus three. Let's see if we can do that. That would be six X cubed. Just did this. Let me do the squares plus five X squared. Let me do the X's minus two minus six is minus eight. Oh, no X's, that's good news. And what else do I have? Minus three minus four, which is minus seven. Someone says, I, I'm completely befuddled. Let's go back and see if we have that. A lot of work, right? And I'm looking at it. What's the original problem? Six X cubed, I'm looking at this over here. Minus, uh, sorry, six X cubed plus five X squared minus seven, three X squared minus two X minus one. This checked out beautifully. What's the result we're looking for at this over here? Now, by the way, someone says, why would I look for that result? When you take, you know, of course, like calculus, we look to simplify things. And I wanna be honest with you, all these things are really simple in calculus, right? They're much simpler than the original problem. Is it equivalent? It's equivalent, it's the same thing, all right? So let's take a look. And I wanna point out where we are now. We're ready to start doing examples. And I'm hoping you're ready to do them too, all right? Thank you for listening, thank you.